Hey everyone, in this video we'll be doing more practice with set builder notation. Now I want to mention that this is problem three in your free discrete math online textbook and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. So let's do this together, starting with A. So technically I already did a video on set builder notation and naive set theory altogether, but this is great practice because in this case we're not given set builder notation and we need to actually build it and construct it ourselves. So set builder notation has a specific framework to it. There's a left side and a right side and then a colon here to separate the two sides. On the left side, we identify what the objects look like. What do they look like? Are they matrices? Are they integers? What kind of variables do you use? Use capital letters or lowercase letters to represent the objects if they're sets or not. So there are a lot of different representations of objects. And so this is where the representation goes right here. And also the universe that we're working in. And so somewhere in here, there's going to be this symbol, which details what that representation is a member of. And that universe that we establish will always be pre-constructed by assumption. So in this case, we have integers, very specific integers, but we have integers. So usually with integers, I have a lowercase x or lowercase letter. And the universe that we're working over are the integers or natural numbers, if you want to use those, or technically you can also say that these are complex numbers, even if you wanted to. Whatever universe you're working in, you need to make sure that you clarify on the right side what it is in this universe that we're grabbing. What rule do we apply to all of these elements to establish what it is that you need to do in order to get into the set? So the way I think about this portion right here is it's kind of like a gate to enter into the set. It's the rule. So right now we've taken all of the integers. We don't want all the integers though. We want to somehow minimize this down to specifically this set right here. So how do we do that? Well, we need to make sure that X is greater than or equal to five and X is less than or equal to 79 and X and two does not divide X. So this is one way of setting up set builder notation for specifically this set. Now there are multiple answers here because you could say this in many different ways. You could say this in many different ways. There are different ways of approaching this, but so long as this rule here, this rule needs to be specific as like a sort of gate so that we only accept certain members into this set. We don't want the entire universe of integers. We just want specifically the odd integers from five to 79. All right, let's move on to part B. So right off the bat, I wanna point out that we are working in the rational numbers. So rational numbers are some P over Q, which lies in the rational numbers, such that P and Q are integers. And we need to also f satisfy that these rational numbers are between negative one and, and one. So we can say negative one is strictly less than P over Q which is strictly less than positive one. All right, so let's do the next one, part C, the even integers. So first we need to establish that we're working over the integers. That's the universe that we exist in. The integers is a pre-established set and you're allowed to pull from any of the universes, the rational numbers, integers, complex numbers, real numbers, irrational numbers, prime numbers, and so on. I'll leave a link in the description, by the way, of all of the boldface 
letters that you can use and what they mean. It's a Wikipedia article, and I really recommend you take a look at all the different meanings for all the different bold script letters. I think that's how you say it. So, x is an integer, but I don't want all the integers in this universe. I want a rule that clarifies what is and is not in this set. So, I need to establish that I want the even ones. So, how can I say that? Well, if 2 divides x, then that would work. I could also just write out x is even. That's another way of writing that. So, the rule is a very flexible thing that you can adjust and play around with. But you also need to make sure that you're specifically targeting the elements that you want. You don't want to overcompensate or undercompensate. And that was not part B, that was part C because now we're in part D. So let's take a look at this set real quick and figure out what is in this set. It's a little ambiguous and that's okay. I mean, you'll get ambiguous sets every once in a while. Um, I per Not from me, but. So what this looks like is just like a bunch of multiples of nine, but we start with negative 18 and we just go on forever to the right. So whenever you're setting up set builder notation, the first part I think is always the easiest. First, we establish that the universe that we're working over are integers. These are integers. They're also rational numbers. They're also complex numbers, but we can say that they're integers. You can even put that they're positive integers. Oh, wait, no, they're not. They're not positive integers. Such that, and now we need a rule that establishes what is and is not in this set. And we need to somehow require only these types of numbers in this set. How do we do that? Well, first we need to establish that x is larger than negative 18, or at least as large as negative 18. And we need to establish that it's a multiple of nine. So nine divides x, and that's it. And that's how we use set builder notation. I personally think set builder notation is a lot easier than what a lot of professors make them out to be. Um, but that's so long as you understand the difference between restricted comprehension and unrestricted comprehension. There is a really good video to watch about naive set theory. And again, I'll <laughs> spam you with this. It's a great video to watch. And this video will help you understand set builder notation a lot more. If you're still confused as to why I did this the way I did. If you have any questions, I'll see you all in the comment section. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video.